Today we're going to be reviewing what we did yesterday with coordinate planes. We will also be adding a little bit more to it, but you should be able to do it with yesterday's information. First, let's review the coordinate plane vocabulary. What you see here is a coordinate plane. A coordinate plane is formed by the intersection of a horizontal number line called the x-axis and a vertical number line called the y-axis. So this picture right here is called a coordinate plane. As mentioned in the previous definition, the x-axis is the horizontal line on the coordinate plane. Horizontal means that it is going from side to side. The y-axis is the vertical line on the coordinate plane. This axis goes up and down, or vertically. A coordinate is a point on the coordinate plane named by the x and y coordinate. And when you name it, you name it in that order, x and then y. Here are some examples of some different coordinates. Every single coordinate has its very own name. Therefore, you should never have a coordinate in two different places that have the same name. Our last definition is the origin. This is the point that is found at 0, 0, or 0x zero and 0y. Zero the green dot right here shows you where the origin is. All of this should be a review for you so that we can move on and practice what we did yesterday. Here is an example of a coordinate on the coordinate plane. Let's see if we can name this coordinate. First we begin at the origin and we see how many places we need to move on the x-axis. When we do that we see that we move four places. This is going to be the first part of our coordinate name. Then we have to see how many places we have to move vertically on the y-axis. And when we do that, we see that we move five places. Therefore, the name for this point on the coordinate plane is 4, 5. Because we moved four places on the x-axis and five places on the y-axis. Now we did a lot of work with this yesterday, but I know that you're thinking, when will I ever use this? You can use this like it's a map. If you look at the coordinate plane, you can see that you're moving a certain distance. In this example, we're going to say that each number stands for one mile. So that is why we have the key in the top right corner that shows one mile. For this example, our origin is going to be home, and then we have many different places that we may want to go from home. Right now, I'm going to give you one minute to use the coordinates that are on this map to determine where each location is. On your VIP, you will also have a copy of this map to help you. You have one minute to do this. If you need more time, you can finish later, but for now, let's continue. For our example, we're going to discuss traveling from the origin to a location. Remember, the origin is found at zero, zero, 
and our origin is home. First, we're going to look to see how far we have to go to the park. What is the coordinate for the park? We see that we have to travel 12 spaces on the x-axis and 9 spaces on the y-axis, which gives us a coordinate of 12, 9. To figure out how far the park is from your house, you must add the x-coordinate to your y-coordinate. Your sum is the total distance that you must travel. So how far is the park from your house? You must add 12 plus 9, and when you do 12 plus 9, you get 21 miles. The park is 21 miles from your house. Now using the same map, let's think about what we would do if we were not coming from the house. If we're not coming from the house, we can't simply use the coordinate. So we have to do a little bit more work. So this time we're going to talk about traveling to and from non-origin locations. Let's start at the park. What is the coordinate of the park? You've already discovered that it is 12-9. From the park, we're going to be traveling to the grocery store. Earlier, you should have already solved for this coordinate. The coordinate of the grocery store is 9, 7. Remember, we do this by going across the x-axis first and then doing the y-axis. Remember, think about it. You have to walk into the elevator before you can go up. Next we have to figure out the coordinates for travel. So we have to see how far we move on the x-axis and how far we move on the y-axis. So my coordinate for travel is 3, 2. I see this because I move three places on the x-axis and two places on the y-axis, which is why my coordinate travel is 3, 2. Just like in our last problem, to figure out how far the park is from the grocery store, we have to add the x-coordinate from our travel to our y-coordinate for our travel. When we do that, we find 3 plus 2 is going to be 5 miles. So to travel from the park to the grocery store, you must travel 5 miles. Now I would like for you to choose your own. I want you to use the same map and choose your own locations to travel to. You have to determine the distance traveled for each one and we'll be able to share with the class what you found. Have fun!